the hiding in an LED camera and I did. avant-garde music in the middle of the punk thing because I thought that was what punk was about. Get rid of the fucking rock and roll sound, you know, let's do something different. So ATV was always, we've always tried to do our own thing within the punk, the context of punk and what it's allowed us to do, we've always tried to do our own thing. You know, tonight we... Probably, yes. Read it. Anarchist in football. Well, I don't really think much about anarchists in football. I don't really think about football much. I wouldn't be surprised if in the next game the Buddhists might just get a few goals. 20 years experience. <laughs> and lovely legs. Lovely legs. Lovely set of pins. Oh, let's, let's see your legs. Let's see your legs. Oh, yes. Sorry about that. Oh, it's delicious. Get the old vitamin C. We had a good match, but it was, uh, it was all right. I, I don't know. I can't bread to talk anymore. And who you play for? So called the Apples. How, how does football and anarchy go together then? Not at all. <laughs> tell, tell us it's about it. It's craft, isn't it? <laughs> Jasmine, bait. Oh, I've got a whistle. <laughs> whistle is power. <laughs> you can fuck what the trots tell you. It's all to do with the whistle. Some definite, uh, you know, 
<coughs> with totalitarian uh, <laughs> behaviour going on here by the police. <laughs> and we might well uh, overthrow them in this game. Right. I'm not being a referee again. Yeah. Half time. It's a funny old game. <laughs> My next comments are, oh, that's he's shagged out. That's about it, really. Well, I'm going to ask. What about anarchy and football? Do they go together? Come on, Everton. Like bread and butter. Shit. <laughs> totally shit. <laughs> I just want to take a throw in. <laughs> <laughs> I took a corner in the last one. A throw in will do me fine for this one. Class war? Yeah. They couldn't win a class struggle, so they ain't going to win football, are they? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a hooligan. What do you think about an anarchy, anarchy in football? Do they go yeah. together? No, not There's at all. There's too many rules. There's too many rules. <laughs> no, in anarchy. Yeah. <laughs> Look, anarchy's got too many rules and football hasn't got enough. <laughs> Active, bad, 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 bad crew. It could go either way, and uh, we just have to uh, wait for the result, really. happening but um, probably the anarchist communist federation would be very criti critical of the lack of um, upfront politics about it. It's been a good idea and it's gone pretty well so far apart from the poetry night where two bastard poets didn't yeah, yeah. turn up. I'm surprised at how many people have come to the book fair actually. How many? Yeah I thought it was going to be smaller so hopefully it will, um, I don't know exactly what it would do to the community in Hanley but um, hopefully it will revitalise it or something. You know. Are there any people from a middle class background in Glasgow? I always wanted to know. Ooh. Uh, there's a mix. Nice talk, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a mixture of people from like sort of various backgrounds, but the important thing is that they support the working class struggle and they're sort of against the ruling class to see the need to get rid of the ruling class, see the need to get rid of uh, capitalism and um, sort of understand that revolutions don't just simply happen in this country, it needs to sort of like be a worldwide phenomena. Class one hasn't achieved much, but at least we won the bloody football tournament. <laughs>
off the road, please. Off the road, please. Causing obstruction at the highway. Unfortunately, this morning, the police discovered the tripods. So instead, we've um, had a bit of a, a critical mass and a walk along the road along the east way. Blocked the east way for um, a few minutes. <laughs> We're a non-hierarchical network of groups, we're international, um, basically we're so that anybody can be, you know, part of the Association of Autonomous Astronauts, um, there are only kind of requirements for joining, so the Association of Autonomous Astronauts is everybody. People like the South London group can't kind of do much exploration into anti gravity, but they have found they can climb inside tumble dryers at wash at laundrettes and like spin around in them to see what weightlessness and disorientation is like. And I mean, anyone could play three sided football if they kind of like get the rules and stuff or whatever, or make up their own rules. Psychogeographical exercises like uh, wandering around with a map of the moon. <laughs> It was very good we went out. We uh, discovered parts of the moon, um, went looking for suitable territory to play three-sided football, and then the groups have come back and kind of reported to each other and we've decided on a site and we're going to go off and do it now. Well, no, at the football. moment it's, we're just using a normal ball. Um, there's been proposals from uh, other participants in the Luther Ballistic Three-Sided Football League that it might be possible to have different shaped boards or more than one ball, but at the moment we're using a normal uh, ball. Is that just oxygen inside the ball or is there any kind of special gas? Or um, it's just oxygen, yeah. Does, does, is that okay for the lunar atmosphere? Or? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, there is gravity on the moon. It's simply um, a tenth of the Earth's gravity. So uh, somebody was worried about the possibility of uh, injury on the moon, given that there's going to be more jumping around. And But in fact, because the gravi gravity is less, you don't actually come down with any more force. <laughs> so what do you think of three-sided football? I don't know, man. It's, it's, it seems to be very awkward, isn't it? I yep. mean, three goals, three different players, and like you don't know who you're passing the ball to, do you, really? Because no one's got no matching clothes, do they? It certainly don't look like it, no. So they're all going to get mixed up. All going to get mixed up. But I suppose it's all right. So space travel by any means necessary. Michael Allen's in the corner. He's drinking whiskey and blood. Smiles razors at the mirror. All his teeth are made of wood. Mr. Redwood thinks it's dead good to disembowel stoats in the dark with Kenneth Clark and a bucket and a goat. And the house is made of nicotine and ice. Threatened with hypocrisy and lies. And the government isn't very nice. Isn't very nice. Thank you very much. Man. It's got a very friendly atmosphere. Yeah. It seems alright, been handing out loads of bus cards at it, but um, I don't think anybody will need them because it seems quite sort of uh, innocuous. Uh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dan Mills. I'm from the McLeibel Support Campaign. The best way of combating, you know, McDonald's, for example, is for people not to go and, and eat there. If people stop going and eating there from now, you know, McDonald's will go out of business in about five days. But you think about McDonald's? 
Rubbish. Donalds, I wouldn't go in there if you paid me a million pounds. I'm not going to give you an opinion one way or the other. It's a load of crap, really. I, I agree with this leaflet. I think the McDonald's clown is a child molester as well. Cinema, you, you by and large, you don't get films banned because the the um, the criteria they're commercial. But um, we've had a number of films banned on television, documentary films banned mm -hmm. on Channel Four, and they they were banned for political reasons. And Channel Four withdrew them from the schedules. They were then asked we asked them to cut from four films to three films. Then they said, we're going to make three other films to put on after them to show, uh, to balance, in inverted mm -hmm. commas, your work. Then I was told they had to, the three films had to be cut from three films to two films. This all took place over about six months or so. Mm -hmm. Then they made another program to go out after hours, which again tried to devalue what we'd done. Um, and then finally, a year after they were made, uh, they said, no, we're not going to show them at all. They will never see the light of day. Because there is no working class. They just shoot up with your attitude problem. There is no working class in a class of society. But who digs the roads? Who drives the buses? Who works the markets in the poor and the lay? Who cleans the floors? Who cleans the toilets? Who does the money while the lines remain? Who drives the tubes? Who collects the tickets? Who puts the letters through your front door? Who shifts the bins? Who does the packing? Who fills the shelves in the superstore? Who makes the beds? The funny thing about regret is that it's better to regret something you have done than to regret something you haven't done.